CEO to get us going with our announcement. Thank you. Cordelia, thank you, and uh, welcome to everybody. Thank you for uh, being here this morning. Welcome to Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. Welcome to the Betty's Ford Road Regional Library. We really appreciate everybody being here today uh, for a big announcement. Um, before we make that announcement, um, I want to introduce a couple of folks. Everybody in here is important. Everybody knows that, right? Um, <laughs> I, I'm a, but I'm not going to introduce everybody. I'm just going to introduce a few folks, uh, particularly uh, some folks from, uh, from partners that are really important to us. Um, first of all, from the County Commission, Ella Scarborough is here. Ella, if you, um, maybe pop up real quickly. Ella, thank you. And, uh, and she is seated next to Deputy County Manager Chris Peake, who's also a terrific partner. Chris, thank you for, for being here. Um, great representation, Mary, from the Board of Education. Thank you. Uh, Mary McRae, who's the Chairman of the uh, Board of Education. <laughs> Dr. Ruby Jones from District 3 uh, Board of Education. And Thelma Byers Bailey, District 2 uh, Board of Education. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Uh, you'll meet Ann Clark in just a moment. Um, and then I want to introduce um, a, a really special um, library trustee uh, who will finish this year his second eight year stint on our board, uh, which is um, actually is not, it's, it's not unprecedented, but it is still a great achievement. That's Bob, that's Bob Sink, who is, uh, who's, who's sitting back there on the third row. Bob, thank you for being here. Um, Bob is, is the board member that you always want to have uh, when you have a board. And so, uh, Bob, thanks. Um, Mary, I want to apologize on behalf of Molly Griffin, who's our board chair. Molly has uh, grandmom duty uh, with some grandchildren uh, headed out of town, and so she sends her regrets. But um, wanted to wanted me to pass that along to you. So um, sorry that, that Molly could not join us this morning. Uh, and finally, and probably the most important person in here is is over here. And this is Alicia Mitchell. Alicia, if you raise your hand, Alicia Mitchell is the library manager here at Beatty's Ford Road. Does a terrific job inside the branch and also a great job in the in the local community so alicia thank you for hosting us this morning um, you're going to hear from um, cms superintendent ann clark and from library director of libraries david singleton in a moment um, and so thank you uh, both uh, for being here as well um, i'm gonna give you the two minute version of how we got to today um, and it started david two and a half years ago david and i and some other colleagues at the library we're having uh, really had a series of conversations about how can we create uh, real leverage in the community uh, and um, and help um, uh, help with literacy in our community and help with academic achievement. And in those conversations, we kept coming back to um, CMS. We kept coming back to the notion of access and expanding access not by a little bit but by a lot. Uh, access to books and materials and information. Um, and we felt like if we could do that, and in particular do that with CMS, that we could help extend the learning that's going on in the classrooms at CMS into the afternoons and evenings and into the weekends and into the summers. And so uh, we began to, to, to work on how to create that sort, of, that sort of access. The next thing that happened in sort of the sequence of events was the Pew Research Center came out with a research study uh, that was uh, about public libraries, and among the findings in the study was this, that 85% of Americans wanted their public libraries to work more closely with their public schools. And that sounded like one plus one equals three, which was really what we were talking about internally. Um, and uh, it, we, we thought that 85% was compelling, and it was also very affirming. And so um, uh, we felt like we were on the right path. That then led us to reach out to Ann Clark and actually before she was in the superintendent role. We reached out to Ann and said we think we know uh, that we can get to one plus one equals three um, and build on the relationship that we already have with the public school system um, and would you like to partner with us to do that and um, we were very fortunate that Ann was willing to do that and so um, since that time she and her staff Valerie Truesdale and others have been really terrific in working with our team at the library to create uh, more access. Um, most recently we had this past year two very successful uh, access initiatives um, that uh, one was targeted toward pre-k to third graders early in the year and then one that was targeted toward middle school and high schoolers uh, in the second semester of the year uh, in, the, in the project lift zone 
Um, and both of those gave us confidence that we could go the next step. And so today we're going to announce something much, our most ambitious initiative yet, um, and something we're very excited about. Uh, and then David will tell you more about that in just a moment. Uh, but before he does that, I'm going to um, invite Ann Clark to come up to the podium and, and to uh, offer her uh, observations and insights into what we're doing here. And so uh, please join me in welcoming Ann Clark, CMS Superintendent. Well, good morning. Um, and thank you again, Alicia, for hosting us here um, at the Beatty's Ford um, Public Library Branch. You know, I would say that the CMS partnership with the uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library is one of those good to great opportunities where the great just keeps getting better every single year. As Lee alluded to, uh, we started with an initiative last year, pre-K through third grade. Um, we, have a, we have a significant proof point that um, putting those cards in the hands of our students in a really intentional way um, has yielded great dividends and today is yet another opportunity for a great partnership to get even better. And I want to particularly thank Lee, David and Martha and many others in the uh, public library organization for continuing to be a huge partner and our community-wide focus on literacy as our North Star. Believe it or not, in 18 days, seven hours, and about 15 minutes, uh, we're going to have close to 1,000 buses rolling and about 145,000 plus students uh, coming back into CMS. And we already have four schools that have led the way that are our continuous learning schools. So a lot is underway. And literacy is our North Star. And out of that North Star declaration in December, has come Read Charlotte, an even deeper partnership with the public library, and a commitment you'll be hearing more about where all 18,000 employees in the Charlotte Mecklenburg schools are gonna commit one hour, once a week, to one kid around a focus on literacy. And we're gonna specifically focus on our third and seventh graders and invite this entire community to help pick up the slack in the remaining grade levels. And we've had um, a huge response from 18,000 employees to be all in for dedicated focus to our third graders, our seventh graders, and our seniors. Um, but invite everyone in the audience to spread the word because it is about a commitment to every one of our kids because we share, like the library, a commitment that we want to deliver on grade level fourth graders in, um, in fourth grade at the beginning of next school year, the 2016-17 school year, but we also want to make sure kids at every single grade level are making academic progress in literacy. Most of you in this audience have heard me say, why fourth grade? And that's because we want kids to be ready to read to learn when they start fourth grade. And the initiative last year with the library helped us position those kids to continue to build on their, re their reading skills outside of school time, weekends and evenings. And we hope to extend that. And so um, just want to highlight again the extraordinary partnership that we enjoy with the library. Lee um, is an incredible leader. Uh, he's about um, the most extraordinary leader that I've ever worked with because he's visionary, but he's also an executor in terms of making vision happen. Um, and I think his team would tell you that. Um, and that's um, been a great joy and I've learned a lot from him as a leader. You're clearly not excited about hearing me continue to talk because you know that the big announcement is coming from, obviously, David Singleton, who's the director of libraries and has, too, been a great partner with our CMS team, both our teaching and learning team and our technology team. Um, and it's his turn to share some exciting news with us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, as we were thinking about what to call this initiative, as Lee said, the idea of access kept coming up. So access for students, what, what does that mean? Uh, we knew that it was part of the library's core mission, and we also knew with CMS that it's really critical to student success. If they don't have access, they don't have access to the resources that will allow them to succeed in school. So this initiative is called One Access, and one is an acronym. It means one number equals. One number equals access. So what does that mean? Well, starting September 1st, every student, every CMS student ID will also be a library account number. 
So in practical terms, here's what that means. All, every almost 145,000 CMS students will be able to access online uh, learning tools, research databases, a large collection of digital collect of materials, um, as well as check up out up to 10 print and audiobooks in our libraries uh, with just their student ID number. So their ID number is truly their account number. So what does that mean in the classroom? Uh, so let's pretend we're in a classroom. So the, t the lesson today is about uh, San Francisco and the Great Fire of 1906. It's a history class. So imagine the teacher, he or she, talking about that fire and um, the students get on their laptops or they bring up the smart board and with uh, just a few clicks, they have access to a wealth of library materials around the fire, around images of the fire, history, uh, papers from that time, all those kinds of things that support the learning in the classroom and extend the learning. <laughs> in addition to that, the students can also, um, in their schools, place holds on materials in the library's collection and pick them up at their local branch at one of our 20 locations. So it's these kind of practical applications that I think will really provide depth and breadth to the, to the classroom experience and make students aware of all the resources that the library and the community really have available to support their success. Uh, part of the library's mission is really to empower individuals with free access to information. It's pretty, pretty lofty, I know. And part of CMS's mission is to maximize academic achievement. Very simple, very succinct. We think One Access combines the best of both of those things with something that's never been done before in this community, and that is access for every student. Before I go, I'd, I'd like to thank the many library and CMS staff who really worked very hard to make this possible in a relatively short time quite honestly. There are more people than I can name, uh, but I want to give special thanks uh, to CMS's virtual learning and media services staff, whose Conversations Energy helped move this conversation forward and really spark ideas about how it would work in practical terms. I really want to particularly thank uh, Superintendent Ann Clark, who did not hesitate one moment when, we, when Lee called her on the phone and said, would you like to do this? She said, yes. Uh, she did not hesitate because it's about student access. Um, I want to recognize a few of the CMS staff who really worked with us very closely, particularly Brian Schultz, Hope Cole, Latarja Henry, and there were many others who supported on the CMS side. On the library side, I want special thanks to Martha Yesowich, our Educational Partnerships Manager, and Dana Ure, our Director of Lifelong Learning, who, and as well as Michael Engelbrecht, uh, one of our information technology staff, who, who made the technology actually work the way we wanted it to work, and it would be easy for the students. So with that, I'll wrap it up, and I'll turn it over for questions and answers. I'm going to turn it over to Cordelia Anderson. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. We hope you are as excited about One Access as we are. We're just so thrilled to have you all here and to be able to share this good news with you. Um, you'll be getting a copy of our press release, which is going to go out in just a couple minutes. And I will open it up to the media for questions and answers with any of our spokespersons here at the podium. Um, we'll also be available afterward for any interviews you want to do out in the library. And our library will be opening in about 10 minutes, so you can also shoot any background footage uh, you need as well. So thank you again so much. Please also pick up one of our wrap cards. These explain what One Access is in very practical terms for the students, for the teachers, for the parents. Um, and if you need any more information, just reach out to us at the library. But thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here today. So would anyone like to start with questions? Well, you, I am not media, but I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Thanks to, it. Um, our kids on the far south end, down toward Pine Bowl. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans on how we're going to get better accessibility for me, uh, media services and libraries, mm -hmm. public libraries for them at that end? Great. Um, 
Leader Davis. Take a question. Yeah, actually, um, I was in uh, Chris and, and uh, Dino DiOrio's offices last week to meet with um, a contingent of leadership from Pineville. Um, we've been aware that they would like to have a, a library. They, we used to have a library in Pineville right. 30 years ago. We don't have one today. There's strong interest in the community. We've, been, we've actually worked with the leadership there for the last couple of years to sort of create the business plan for doing so. Um, and they, they seem very serious about um, wanting to make an investment in their, in their town yeah. for a library and um, it, lots, of, lots of details to work through, but obviously we would, we'd be delighted to, to operate the library for them. So I'm very, I'm very encouraged that um, uh, at some point in the relatively near future, we'll have solved that. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, Katie. Um, this might be a combination question for Anna and David. Um, I'm curious how CMS and the library are planning to roll this out to students, how you'll educate them on what's available and how they access it. And then also curious um, if you've set any goals for number of users you'd like to have by a certain period or anything like that. I'll, I'll jump up and let uh, library staff join me um, the good news is we don't have to uh, invent this process. Uh, we've proved that we could do it with four-year-olds to eight-year-olds, so I don't anticipate any challenges in executing that with nine to 18-year-olds. Um, and certainly we'll be rolling it out in a similar fashion to the process that we used last year, and then we'll be able to track that through the library's um, support to know which schools are fully uh, utilizing it. We certainly have a goal that um, every single CMS student would use uh, their access either online or face-to-face -face or both um, because one of the things we know particularly is the, the need to make sure our students have access to books in the home. Uh, so while that can be done online, we want to make sure our students are availing themselves of that opportunity to check out up to 10 resources on a visit um, so that they have those resources um, there in their home. So I will be particularly in, uh, interested in the walk-in count um, by student, by school, because it will um, give me better sense that our students have access to the re resources in the home that they need. Um, and so that's particular interest to me. Uh, but in terms of the response, it was interesting. I was um, visiting with someone who has an incoming ninth grader at one of our high schools and she was testing this idea out with her daughter and she said, what's your ID number? And the student rattled it right off. And the student also has a library card and her, then her mother said, well, what's your uh, library card number? And the student didn't know. So I think it really points to the opportunity to create this one access, even for our students that have an ID mm -hmm. and a library card right now to merge those two because our students do need their ID card and that number for so many things as they go through life that it didn't surprise me when that parent shared the story. So we will be tracking uh, the, the usage um, as we did with our pre-K through third grade students and particularly in the summer and, and weekends to know that this, this is increasing uh, the access to books that we all want for our kids. And I'll just add um, that we've been working, we'll be, and continue working with educators, with teachers in the schools, making them aware of the resources that, that support learning in the classroom so that they can actually use those res resources in the classroom. But we do have the ability to track down to the school level, right, uh, to the grade level, and to the grade level uh, of students using their card. So we'll be able to report back to CMS about how many students used and how often as well. As you roll out this uh, program, have you already determined how you're going to increase the capacity for digital literacy as your volume increases? Question. Uh, you want to start? You want to start? I'll add something to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we could have an entire another session yeah. on digital. Sure. But let me, let, about let, me, let me let me add David to speak to it. But it's a great question, and um, so it's it's one of our highest strategic priorities. Um, we've been at work building out our digital platform for the last couple of years and it will, it complements what we're talking about here today. Uh, and I'll say that we, we're very grateful for support from Mecklenburg County that has really has allowed us to build out that digital platform with many more resources than we've had in the past. Uh, we are very involved with uh, Google Fiber implementation in Charlotte. 
uh, which, and we are hosting actually an uh, uh, intern from the, the Google nonprofit N10 at the library, which is really focused on helping people in the community uh, make sure that everyone is included. Uh, everyone has access to the technology, but everybody has access to use the technology and know how it can improve their lives, how it can be useful in their practical lives. That includes everyone from early to seniors. Question? Yeah, question. Yes. It sounds like primarily a technology, technology and operational initiative. Is there any way that the community can support this effort directly? Great question. Lee, would you like to speak to that? Uh, Weston, it, um, it does depend on execution on the technology side, and um, Frank Blair uh, is right here and working with our partners at CMS to make sure all that works right. Um, I think what the community can do is just to encourage um, families and students to, to, to utilize this, from this new resource. Um, and you know, that can be just simple as, as word of mouth. I'm going to jump in here and add to that because I think the community can help us by every time you see a kid ask them what book they're reading. Mm -hmm. um, instead of talking about the apps they have on their iPad or their phone or what movie they've been to, to really start having the conversation with kids um, and we're doing that in CMS by having that conversation with our adults. We have a series going right now where we're interviewing staff and saying what book are you reading, what books on your pile to read, I mean, if we're going to have literacy as our North Star, then we've got to help our kids have a focus. And it starts with adults asking the right questions. So when you ask me what my favorite book is and I say Charlotte's Web, then the next question is what character in that book is your favorite and why? That we have those kinds of conversations with kids in our community and change the questions we ask kids. And then, obviously, point them toward their public library because you know they have an ID. I have a question, Jackie, for me. Um, sure. I visit this library quite often. And um, Thank you. the question is, this is, it seems to me that this is one of the, the, the smallest regional libraries. And I know we just updated it a couple of years ago. But, it, but when I come, it is so full. And everything's used so much, and, and thank God. But the question is, when are we going to actually bring this one up to the standards that we have more across from some of the other places because it's too small? Um, great question, and uh, I'm so glad that Chris Peak is sitting beside you to hear, <laughs> to hear this answer. Um, I told Chris, I told Chris, I said, he's a great, great <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one is, um, and you know, Alicia provides terrific leadership here. This, this is this is one of our busiest, busiest and most appreciated uh, branches. Uh, second, it's not that much smaller than some of our some of our uh, as you might imagine. Um, I think it's David. It's probably fair to say almost every single one of our libraries is smaller than we wish that it were. Yeah. Um, but um, with, with support from, um, from the county, we're, uh, we're in the midst, as you know, right now we have four library projects that are in the current CIP program, mm -hmm. and we will expand and renovate uh, the Martian Library, followed closely behind by doing the same thing at West Boulevard, and the same thing at North County, and then the same thing at South County. Um, I, think, I think North is just gonna be a renovation, not an expansion. So anyway, um, the county's been supportive and, and we'll continue to, to, to work. That's a big part of Frank's role. Dennis LaCaria from the county is here and, and been a great partner on this as well. And it's just, um, uh, we'll continue to improve that distribution system every chance that we have. Thank you. Yep. Just one more. Lee, any yep. thoughts on, since we're, we're targeting birth on up for mm -hmm. this literacy initiative, yep. Any way that we have you ever thought about how we're going to roll this out in a similar fashion to our daycare centers so that those teachers in those daycare centers can also have this kind of access? Yeah, we'll ask Dave to speak to our uh, maybe our outreach efforts. Uh, we've been working a lot with uh, daycares. We, we have not developed a comprehensive strategy yet, but we're talking about that right now. One of the innovative programs we've done in the last few years is uh, work with daycare providers 
particularly in low-income communities, because what we realized is a lot of times the daycare providers don't have high literacy skills, so they don't have books in the daycare, and they don't read to the children. So we worked with them to help them uh, with, with books, also with how to read a book to kids, and place books in, in the daycare, so they have resources, but also work with the children and the parents so they extend that experience into the home, helping the parents <coughs> understand that there's some simple things they can do to encourage literacy and build literacy skills in their children. Mary, you, uh, on your question, um, a number of you in the room know Gary McFadden in our community yeah. and his involvement with the, I think it's called Cops and Barbers. Yeah. He actually called yesterday to see if the library would be interested in working with his group um, to, uh, to put re more resources in barbershops in our community. Great part of that program great, great idea great request we're responding to them what i found out uh is that uh dana dana your's team is already in some barber shops uh in our community so we're um, very enthusiastic about responding to gary's request and i thought it was really good news that we're already already involved doing what he's asking us to do so add one thing, um, we have another literacy initiative called Get Ready With Words that was actually funded by PNC, who's represented here today. Um, that is a early literacy outreach program being led by our early literacy coordinator, Barbara Contesano, who is part of Dana's team. And they are doing great work in the Greer Heights and Montclair neighborhoods currently, and they've been there all summer. We're also going to be launching a public awareness campaign about the importance of early literacy and vocabulary building starting next month. Um, and we're partnering with Discovery Place and Community School of the Arts on that as well. So that's another way that we're really targeting that birth through five age group and really getting out in the community. So um, great. Other questions? Yeah, I think this is really exciting, definitely knowing within the schoolhouse that the kids need that lunch number or that. ID number for so many different things, including lunch. Um, I think this is probably two-pronged. First question is, has this been tried in other communities, a project of this magnitude? And then second, probably to you, Superintendent, do you see this as having an impact on the school library circulation of books and resources currently? Mm -hmm. you want to speak to the first I'll, I'll talk about the first one. Um, the only community that I'm aware of that has been tried in is Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and they've actually um, set up school libraries to be kind of branches of the public library there. Right. So they've really extended even further than that. But uh, Nashville's, so uh, we talked with them, we talked with other libraries who've done some smaller scale projects, right. but we're one of the few who've actually done it on this scale. So, you know, my hope is that the combination of the regional libraries and our media centers in um, our 168 schools just create that hub all over our community for you know access to books. Uh, we have one media specialist in every um, school or a person at least available as a resource and so I see that person pushing into the classroom and also providing uh, expertise back to the earlier question about digital literacy. Uh, we need to continue to have our own focus so I see that as um, a real role that our media specialists will play in the district around digital literacy and around pushing resources uh, into the grade level team meetings and into the department meetings um, at, the, at the secondary level. Great, thanks. All right, any other questions? Great, well also all of our wonderful spokespersons will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews for our friends in the press. And, um, other than that, thank you all so much for coming. Again, please take up a rack card. Grab a couple of you who know some people who have kids. Um, remember, this initiative is going to start September 1st, so those student ID numbers are going to be But we know people will be excited, so that's what we're proud to have. Um, and again, thank you all for being here and for being part of this very exciting announcement.